Hi, I'm Photo Joseph, photojoseph.com, and today's presentation is all about the creation of this image here. Now, I'm creating this presentation for two groups of people. For photographers who are simply interested in how this sort of image comes together, uh, but primarily for clients. And I'm creating this because it's important, I believe, for clients to understand what can go into an image like this and why an image like this can cost as much money as it can cost. The third group would be the end viewer, the end user, if you will. And while it's great if they can appreciate what really goes into an image, at the end of the day, that's not the objective. Of course, as a photographer, I want them to look at an image and think it's wonderful, but I don't necessarily want them to know what went into it. If a viewer is looking at this and says, oh, I can see that you composited this chair and combined these two lights and so on, then to some degree you failed as a photographer. What you really want is for your viewers to simply look at the image and be potentially blown away about how great it is, but not know what it took. For the photographers and for the clients or potential clients on the other hand, it's very important for them to understand what does go into the creation of an image like this. So let's get started. The first step is simply location scouting. You can't go into a shot like this without ever having seen the environment before, or at least you probably shouldn't. And this will give you an idea of just what it's going to take. And of course, when you're bidding for the job, what it's going to take to get this. So as you can see here, it's quite a wide ornate room. The lighting is lovely interior lighting, but combined with daylight and quite a bit of it at the moment here. And uh, obviously just a whole lot of contrast, a lot of texture, and really a lot of details that we're going to need to be able to highlight. This up here is a skylight that is actually made of colored paper. So there's no artificial illumination coming through the ceiling. So this is only visible in the daytime. At night, this is simply dark. You don't see the colored panels there. So this is going to become important later on in the composite, as you will see. This particular element was an important piece of furniture for the client. It's some kind of hand-painted antique or antiqued piece of furniture. It has this really dark bluish green color to it that the client really wanted to have shown. And so this was an important element to make sure that we got right. And as you can see, because it's so dark, that was going to be a particularly challenging element to bring into the whole piece. There's a fireplace, which of course we were going to light for the final composite. And this window screen is another custom built piece and it's painted the same color or pretty close to the same color as that earlier piece of dark bluish green furniture. And here we have very small elements, just the bars on the window screen itself, if you will, that have that color on it. So it's going to be even more challenging than the larger credenza to get lit and composite into the final shot properly. And then here's just a vertical shot just to kind of show the, the overall scope of the scene. It's again, obviously quite large. The shooting setup is fairly straightforward. Camera, of course, is on a tripod, and these are just a couple of Instagram behind the scenes shots, so nothing too detailed or elaborate here. But of course, the camera is going to be on a tripod for all these shots. You can see on the camera we have a wireless flash trigger, which is uh, going to be very important as we have lights all over the place, including outdoors for some shots. And on the top of that, a wireless receiver for triggering the camera. I could use a cable release, a, a wired cable release as well, just wired. This is what I happen to have here. And it just makes it easier to make sure you're not ever touching the camera at all. Also shooting tethered. This is pretty important here because we want to be able to see not only myself as the photographer, but also for the client to be able to see that we're getting the shot or at least the elements that they want. Because the room is so full of so many details and really important little elements, we really want to make sure that we capture every last piece of it before we leave. Because once we break set, there's not going to be any coming back to add in a piece later. Once the camera moves, that's it. You pretty much would have to start over again. So there we go. There's the basic setup. There's me tethered. Uh, you can see the camera in the background and getting ready to shoot the scene. So let's talk about the final composite. So here we go with the left side of the scene. This is just your basic ambient light environment. The scene is extremely wide, so wider than we could get in a single frame with a single lens. So we had to pivot the camera to capture uh, both sides of it. So here's left half and right half. And the jagged line down the middle, that's just Photoshop's own uh, assembly of the two halves. It's not any kind of fancy hand-drawn line. It's just Photoshop doing its thing. Now, notice on the right-hand side of this scene, the lamp is a little bit cool. That lamp is actually being illuminated with a small strobe. There was no light bulb that was bright enough to illuminate that corner of the scene the way we wanted. 
So that is a small strobe, just a Canon speed light that is jerry-rigged into the lamp to illuminate that. However, the color on there you can see is quite cool. So this next shot is the same photo, just at a different color temperature that was then comped in. So going back again, you've got the left side, the right side, and then the lamp on the very right. Comped together gives us this back plate. So this is our, our base plate for the whole thing. This is what is the beginning point of all the compositing that's about to go into it. If you look at this image now, it's not terrible. And if I was being hired to do this shot for a very low budget, this is probably essentially what would get delivered, maybe a little bit of HDR to bring in some uh, texture in the highlights, and probably a little less warm, but essentially this is what you would get for a low budget shoot of a room like this. And even then, this is still take a fair amount of time to put together, but that's kind of the, the base point. And as you're going to see, the final ending point is a far, far cry from where we started. So let's get started with the heavy composites. The key to this scene, this entire setup, is that each important element is lit, shot, and then comped in separately. So here you can see we're lighting the chair. Now, in this scene, we can obviously see we've got a, someone standing here that's actually the client with the light, and that light is shining on the chair here. What we're not seeing is some lights coming from out of camera off frame coming in this way to light the side of that chair. And I don't know, maybe a reflector or something else somewhere else in here. But essentially, this is what we're doing. And this first piece really does illustrate why we need to go to these great lengths. Clearly, I can't have a person or a light here in the scene for the final composite. So if I want to light this element adequately, it really does mean that I'm going to have to light it on its own and then comp it in with everything else later. So there's the chair, and then there is the chair essentially cut out. You can see it's a little bit more than just the chair. There's that little table, this corner basket of um, blankets or whatever those are. A bit of the lamp up there, and those white spots on the lamp, those little lines in here, those aren't reflections. Those are cutouts in the in that metal. Uh, something I don't remember now exactly what, maybe too dark or too bright, but those were painted out and then comped in from another layer as well. So anyway, so there's your basic piece for the chair itself. All right, next up, let's see, this is the couch. So once again, we can see a light clearly in the shot. This light here is bouncing light off of the ceiling down onto the couch for the primary light. Uh, there's probably another light coming off camera from over here somewhere, but essentially here we are photographing the couch itself. So if we comp that out, there is what we've got. All right, so there's two pieces. And next up is the blanket, the throw that's here. Uh, light is coming from off camera somewhere. You can see a reflector here that is probably bouncing some light onto this. So there's the little blanket itself. And if we comp that out, there's what we've got. And then going back to the same shot from here, we pulled out some detail in the ceiling. Somewhere along the way, I realized that I had lost texture up there. And so I used this shot to pull in some texture of that ceiling and that is there. Next up is the green credenza. So again, remember earlier we were talking about this is a very critical piece of furniture, obviously being lit from here. There's, who knows, maybe another light somewhere off camera. I'm not really sure at this point, but uh, doesn't matter. Point being that credenza there is on its own and we essentially are going to be cutting this out. And there we go. There's the comp for that. Next up is going to be the pillows. The lights have changed slightly. We're now really focusing on the pillows in here, and I believe this composite is also including some of that edge table again and some of the curtains in here. Yep, there we go. So there is that element of it. And now we're over here on the left-hand side, and by the way, these are not necessarily shown in the order that they were shot. These are shown in the order that they were comped together. The left-hand side of the scene was shot second, shot later in the day, so the external light was quite different. And here we are doing a couple things at once. We are shooting for the green screen itself, the, that element over the window, and for the exterior. Now you may recall from the earlier shots that this window out here was blue in the background. It was shot at twilight. The actual natural environment was blue outside. And so by the time we got over to the left-hand side of the scene, we needed to mimic that light through this window. And so there's a couple things going on here. Uh, the front of the window, what we're looking at first, is simply this here. We've got a reflector with a handheld strobe bouncing into that and illuminating onto there. There's another light coming from down the stairs somewhere. 
there's a little stairwell up here coming down the stairs and illuminating this too. So we've got a couple different lights that are illuminating the screen itself in there. Now let's get rid of those and talk about the exterior. So if, we're, if we were to open these screens out here, you would just see some bushes. So looking through this window here, there's some bushes out there. And so we needed to light those bushes and that's easy enough to make blue, just put a strobe out there with a blue gel on it. The funny thing about this was that as we're lighting it, I'm indoors and the assistant's outside and he's trying to shine the light and get the light to illuminate these bushes. And for whatever reason, this whole section here was just dark. There was absolutely nothing coming in there. And I could not for the life of me figure out why. We had the assistant moving the light up and down and pointing it in different directions. And finally realized that over in the corner here, we're not actually looking at the bush. Through that portion of the window, we're looking at the roof of the neighbor's house. And without lighting it, it just gave us this big black hole up there. So we actually lit not only the bush, so we had blue lights on this side lighting the bush. Where the red triangle is, we had another light on a very tall stand illuminating the neighbor's roof with the blue gel. And that gave us finally the blue lights that we needed throughout the back of that scene. So there we've illuminated the outdoors and illuminated the front of the screen. So that's a single shot to get that piece. And there we go. Now let's start getting into some more details in the center of the room. This is the fireplace itself, just the actual flame itself. Uh, the flame in the original comp wasn't to my liking, so I found a shot that I like a little bit better. And so there we have just the fire and the flames in there. And next up is the red chair, another very important element. Here we can clearly see we've got a light here shining down. We've got a light here shining down. And if you look closely in here, you'll see that there is a small light behind this yellow and green thing that is shining on the back of that chair just to give that a little bit of separation from the background. So quite a few lights in that comped out and we have the red chair and it looks like a little bit of the coffee table and that end table next to it as well. The next layer in here is the texture on the walls behind these lamps in here. So we've got these lamps and clearly a lot of beautiful texture and color happening on the wall behind it. So we wanted to be able to pull that texture out and that is what this layer is all about. So there's that one. And the next one here is just a little bit darker exposure, and this is to get the bulbs themselves. So the hottest point out of these here lights and also the hottest point out of this light here. So that is, again, its own layer. And now we start building the ceiling. So this shot, as you can see by looking through the windows here and here, is shot much earlier in the day. This was, in fact, the very first shot that we did because we knew that we had to capture this part of the scene while it was daylight because that was of course not going to be illuminated once the sun went down and unless I wanted to climb up on the roof with a 600 watt strobe then it was not going to be possible to shoot that after dark so we had to shoot that early on and so there is the beginning of that and you can see there's a few different versions of the same layer that went into this we have here a layer showing the colors and some of the uh, cove itself and then here's just another opacity layer on there just to lighten it up a bit. I honestly don't remember exactly what this is, but it's just another layer of texture on there. And another shot here, slightly different exposure, pulling in just the paper elements themselves. And then of course that all gets comped together. Okay, now we're back to the beginning, back to the base plate. Now we're going to start adding all those layers in one at a time so you can see this build up. So again, this is the original base plate that we saw when we first started, the image that I said, if this is low budget, this is probably what we would get, plus a little bit of HDR to pull in some details out of the highlights. But now let's show how this works when we actually do all this work to photograph each element individually. So starting on the right with the chair, we add in the chair. Then there's gonna be the couch, and then the blanket on the corner of the couch, and then the texture on the ceiling above the green credenza, and then the green credenza itself, and the white pillows in front of the credenza, then the window and screen on the left, the fire in the fireplace, the red chair, the texture on the walls behind the red chair, the hot spots on the light bulbs themselves, the skylight in the ceiling, and this is all pulled together at once just to throw that in all at one time, and then finally a little bit of final retouching. In here as you can see there's lots of elements that we don't really want in here. There's vents and see, there's a vent over here, there's this cove, which is really just a headway to go up the stairs, which is at this point just a distracting shadow, a lamp that's only partially in there we don't really want to see. Let's see, there's a power outlet there, 
and I think a couple other small elements that were removed. So let's just get rid of all those to clean that up a bit. And there we have it. That is the final composite. So now let's take a quick look at a before and after. So here's the original backplate again, and just a simple wipe over revealing the new version of the image, which as you can clearly see, has a vast amount more detail. There's more texture, there's more color. There is more of everything that the client wanted, showing all of the individual elements and individual details that they needed to be seen in this environment. So as you can see, this type of an image does take quite a bit of time and effort and foresight to create. This is not something that happens easily nor automatically. There's a lot of manual work that is involved in this and a lot of hours spent not only shooting it, but also putting it together later. So for photographers out there interested in this type of work, there you go. There's just a little look behind the scenes at how something like that can be created. And more importantly, for potential clients, you can see what is involved in making an image that looks that good and hopefully help you to understand why sometimes the rates may seem considerably higher than you may have originally thought to create something quite that beautiful. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at photojoseph.com. Thanks.